Hey everyone, we're going to start off now with the profit and loss forecast sheet. Now in this, the first thing I'm going to deal with is groupings. Because you can see all these little plus buttons here and these little one and twos here and the fact that these little lines just in between. So if you want to expand everything, just press this little two button here and boom, everything opens up including all the guide here, all the goodies. And we'll close this up here. If you want to check out the guide, every single sheet has a step-by-step -step sort of explanation about what you need to fill in. Everything is formatted pretty consistently. So if we look into the intro sheet, you'll see here that it sets out that this is what a drop-down menu looks like. Here is an assumption. This is just a presentation. You can fill in like someone's name. The green cells are links to everywhere, and the black cells are formats, which you don't need to touch unless you want to change something. Now, let's come back to here now and close this up. Let's start out with the top, and we can see here that we've got summary data from your total customers all the way down to your revenue. And that will spill step by step down from your gross revenue to your net, making deductions for cancellations, your VAT, if you have that, your COGS, getting all the way down to your net income. And down here we have your cash flow calculations and where you can input your fundraising amount. But let's start at the top and I'll take you all the way through this now. Here's the guide, check it out, follow it. Your VAT income tax assumptions are linked to your P&L actual sheet, so you don't need to touch these. The green cells, as you can see, are all links. There's actually very few assumptions that you need to put in this sheet. So we can spin through these. We can see our total customers at the end of the month, your new customers, again, by plan, basic, premium, pro, your monthly customers at the end of the month, your annual customers, your bookings, excluding the professional services, which are put in on a separate line item, your monthly recurring revenue by package, your professional services that I just mentioned, notice the green links. This all adds up to equal your gross revenue, which is a combination of your MRR plus your professional services. Here you can see your growth rates. Now. I mentioned there's very few assumptions here. There's, I think, only four on this whole sheet. The first one is going to be your discounts and vouchers. This is a percentage of your revenue. So is it 2%? Is it 5 Is it 10 Maybe at the start, you need to have a higher discounts and vouchers rate to encourage people to use your service. Maybe you don't. If you don't want to, just set it to zero. Maybe you start out with 2% at the start, and over time, you want to increase that up. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this and start it here. We'll put in 5% and boom. You can see along the lines, 5% consistently. Maybe you don't want to do that. You want to say, we'll start out with 5% for promotion for one month, and then we're going to put this at zero. Now we can see no more discounts and vouchers. We'll just undo all these things by pressing Control Z. Boom, gone. So we make this deduction, we have a net revenue. The next input that you have to put in, or not, if you don't want to put it in, just put zero. Congratulations, no more cancellations. Fantastic. But we'll just put that back in here. So your cancellations are customers who decide they're not using it. They cancel, they'll put out their credit card or something. If you're running a business, you'll understand this already. Next, we'll calculate the revenue after cancellations. Um, in, the, in the UK, at least, you have to pay VAT on products. The assumption is in the P&L actual sheet not in this sheet, it just links to it. So you can see here the assumptions VAT. That's a defined name. It could be a formula, but we just change it here and we create a name so you know exactly how it's linked up. That makes a deduction for it. Here we'll see the first difference between your PL accounting and your cash accounting. So you're not going to pay out VAT every month unless that actually is the case in your country. You're going to pay out annually. But for your P&L purposes, you want to show how you accrue this on a monthly basis. All right. So that's what that does. Next, we have our revenue after VAT. We have our monthly growth and our daily growth average, which makes a change for the number of days that you have in a month to make sure it all adds up. Now, 
in SaaS companies, cogs are really important, right? It's it's really important in calculating your LTV, so we have to make these deductions here. The line items that we're going to have are your staff cogs, which comes out of your staff sheet, and your payment costs, your server costs, and your email costs. The payment, server, and email costs come out of a separate sheet, um, which is all just related to cogs. They add up, and that tells you what your total cogs is. You can see here it's 32.4, not 32.6. Why is that? Well, we notice here that we have some cancellations, right? You're 0.5% of people who are going to cancel every single month, deducting your revenue. Well, the way that we forecasted this or assume this to happen is that you're going to scale up your customer success, your customer care, your uh, developer resources to support the number of people you have. You will have payment transaction costs. You will be you know, provisioning your servers to support this and send out emails to customers. But if your customers have canceled at the start of the month, then during the month, they are not going to be drawing down your resources. Therefore, if people cancel, we make a deduction. Another way of thinking about this, just to understand it more, is an e-commerce business. In e-commerce, if people cancel a good, you order some shoes, you decide that you don't want them, that inventory doesn't just disappear, right? It's still there. So you would make a deduction here in order to put the inventory back, right? Here, what we're talking about is forecasting, you know, emails, server costs, which are not going to happen because people canceled. So you make a deduction. This is not an assumption that you normally see in sheets, but I think it really adds to you really understanding all the details that are going to happen in your business. Now, so after your COGS, you deduct these from your net revenue. After that, if you haven't, we've got our gross profit and your percentage margin. Again, this is really key for calculating your LTV. We'll see here that you're spending quite a lot more money than you're making right now, but this is going to improve over time. We'll see now, uh, Right at the end of our forecast, your gross profit margin under dummy numbers is almost 80%, which is pretty good. But in the early days, of course, you're scaling up, you're not generating a lot of revenue, you're incurring costs, so your margins are going to be low. Now, the next deductions that we're going to make are for your actual paid marketing costs. And this is not your staff. So we'll see here that you're spending $11,000 on paid marketing. This is your... SEM, Facebook expenditure, um, and your channel sales, CPA or CPLs, which are calculated in uh, three different sheets. And your offline marketing, which comes out of your paid sheets. We'll see here that we decided to spend a $5,000 offline spend that we can't actually track. So we put that in there. We add these up and you can see that that equals $11,000. So your percentage of revenue shows how much of your marketing spend of your revenue you're spending. At this time, it's going to be really high. Over time, your percentage of marketing and percentage of revenue will decrease. Then we calculate your gross profit after marketing, and we can calculate your margin again. Now, the next assumption you're going to have to make out of that, uh, this sheet, which is, I think, the third assumption out of four, is your bad debt and credit card fraud. So naughty people using other people's credit cards. Unfortunately, you take the pain for it. We're making the assumption here of 2%. You could say it'll start smaller, it'll get bigger. Again, using the same method we did before. Making an deduction before this, we have your gross profit before your operating expenses, which are really, really important. So let's do all these now. The three key buckets are your G&A, your R&D, and your sales and marketing. Right, these three add up to your total operating expenditures. Now, these all are fed in from your staff sheet, which also has your general associated costs here. And you can see what your percentage of your revenue are, which again will decrease relatively over time as you generate more revenue, hopefully. After deducting your OPEX, we have your EBITDA, which is your earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. In this sheet, uh, we do allow for deductions of depreciation. We have income taxes. We do not deduct for amortization and for interest because they're just not meaningful, right? 
Um, it's quite unlikely you're going to have a lot of amortization costs. And sure, I, we could add in a couple of lines to put in some interest, but the reality is you're not going to have like a ton of cash. And even if you did, you're not going to have a treasury function to optimize that. So your interest rate is just not meaningful. So after EBITDA, the deductions we want to make for your net income are your depreciation and your income tax. These are really accounting figures. Depreciation offers a tax shield for you, which is why we've included it in the model. This uh, number takes your total capex over the year, figures out your depreciation and smooths it across. It's only really useful in terms of calculating what your potential income tax will be, right? Which is calculate the next row. Again, the assumptions that we do are very simple, but the model is quite powerful. After deducting your depreciation and income taxes, we come down to your bottom line, which is net income. Uh, you can check out your margin, which is terrible right now. But again, it starts getting a little bit more positive in future. I don't recommend trying to get too profitable too fast, at least in your model. In reality, it would be great because investors are not going to buy it. They know it takes a lot of time before you'll actually start making money. There's a lot of SaaS companies you know and have heard of who've gone public and are still making losses. Don't assume you're going to start being profitable super soon. Okay. Now, that is your GAP or IFRS type accounting. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close to reality. So what you actually really care about is how much money is going out on a monthly basis. So this schedule, the operating cash flow, helps you figure that out. What we do is we take your net income and make a series of additions and deductions in order to get all the way down here to your actual operating cash flow. Now let's walk through the line items and I'll explain to you how they're impacting the difference between 87 and 85 here. So first off, we just take your net income, which was calculated in your PL before. We're gonna deduct that depreciation because it's an imaginary number. And then we're going to deduct your capex. This isn't in your PL. We're deducting it because it's actually a cash expense that you have to realize, right? So we deduct this out here. Now we calculate your MRR above. This is a sort of smoothed accounting number. Again, it's not a cash number, right? So we're taking that revenue value out and we're going to add back in your bookings or your billings, which in our model is effectively the same thing. It's your revenue that you've been paid up for. Now, the real reason why your bookings are bigger than your MRR before is because in this model, you can do annual upfront payments of anything from two to 36 months. The reality is it's mainly about 12 months. That means people will pay you upfront, so you're getting more cash at that point. So that number is going to be higher. Now, the next number we have is your monthly bonus amount. In the PL, we're recognizing this as it happens. It's an accrual that will happen over time, but you don't actually pay it till the year end. Now, in the format formatting sheet, you set out the first month of your forecast. That is when you haven't had real numbers and you want to start forecasting them. The month of your actuals which is should be the start of the month. Let's call it January, right? So it makes sense. So here we're going to have January, February, March as actual, and April will start being your actual forecast. If, during your fundraising process, if it's going to take a bit of a while, you can change this number. So April will now be March 2017. And the model will call in an additional month. Let's undo this now. Now here, what is your month end? So 12 equals December, one equals January. Okay, the comment says it here, which means that the annual deduction that you have to pay will come out at your actual year end. And you can change it whenever you want, whatever makes sense for your business. So we'll see here, we've deducted the monthly accrual, and now I have to deduct the annual bonus. So we'll say here it's 208, which is the total that you accrued over that period of 208. Boom. Now we're gonna do the same thing for monthly VAT. Again, the assumption in your country is you pay at the end of the year. Now, 
you'll see if you try add this up, it gets to 30, not 39. Why is that? What's happening here? Well, you've been taking in your bookings versus your MRR, something we talked about. On a cash basis, actually, you need to pay it on the amount that's actually happened, right? Not the accrual basis. And so the annual amount of the VAT you're paying is actually going to be coming off the, the amount that's happened to date. So that's why that number is going to be different. Now, we would deduct monthly tax the same way, and then we would deduct the annual tax. But the reality is you're not making any money, so there's no tax to pay. If you were making money, then you would see a deduction. In this model, we assumed you haven't made enough money, so there's no tax. Now, the next thing we do is take out your discount vouchers, again, off your MRR basis, and take it off your booking basis. It's bigger because you, know, you took in more money, therefore you use more discounts vouchers. Same thing for cancellations, same thing for bad debt. And that all adds up then to $87,500. Now, we want to see what happens with your actual cash. Um, in this sheet, we want to add in when you plan on doing a fundraise. So in here, we reckon we're going to happen pretty bloody soon. It may actually not happen your next month or your first month of forecast. Maybe it's going to take a little bit while longer. So we'll just move that across there, delete that here, and we'll see what a cash position is. So at the moment, on a forecasted basis, we're kind of not doing so great until we get some money in the bank. We probably want to hurry up, right? Cool. So that is an intro into your PL forecast. Again, there's very few assumptions you need to add here. It just sucks up everything, puts it in here. Cool. Now, next one we're going to go through is your PL actuals.